WXII 12 News at 11 starts right now. Another step forward for North Carolina's voting districts, what lawmakers did today and what still has to be completed before Wednesday. Plus, we remember the life and legacy of local civil rights activist, the Reverend Dr. Carlton Eversley. And happening right now in Winston-Salem, Highway Patrol has shut down both directions of Reedsville Road near Old Hollow Road in Walkertown because of a crash. It happened around 8.30. Investigators have not released any other details. First, breaking news at 11. Police in Fayetteville say they now have a person in custody after someone was shot on the campus of Fayetteville State University. It happened earlier tonight. This is not a fatal shooting. The victim was apparently able to call 911. Even though that person has survived, it is unclear how they're doing tonight. Initially, the school did put out reports that an active shooter was on campus. Fayetteville's police chief confirms that is not the case. No active shooter, nor is there any longer a threat to the community. We'll keep you updated as soon as we learn more. New tonight, after a lot of tug and war, tug of war, the state Senate approves new voting district maps ahead of Wednesday's deadline. A good step, but still quite a bit of work to do. They need to be approved by the state house, and then Governor Cooper needs to sign off on these. Judges ordered new voting district maps after the current ones were recently ruled to be illegally drawn in favor of Republicans. Now, these new maps must be more compact, avoid splitting districts and cities, and avoid placing two incumbents in the same district. North Carolina. Carolina judges have appointed a Stanford University law professor to check the changes and to also redraw districts himself if he determines that the judges debt guidelines were not followed. Also new tonight, the North Carolina House has passed more mini budgets as the state budget stalemate in Raleigh continues. The first is known as House Bill 29, the Standing Up for Rape Victims Act of 2019. That bill sets new protocols to speed up the processing of sexual assault kits. It also lets local law enforcement create groups in their department to help with that process and get information into the right databases. There's $6 million heading to the State Justice Department to back up those new protocols. House Bill 75 also passed the Senate today. That bill approves the use of $67 million bucks for school safety equipment and training. The money is going to go towards hiring school resource officers, threat assessment teams, and mental health support personnel at grades K through 12 throughout the state of North Carolina. Both bills now headed to the governor for his final approval. School safety is also expected to be a topic at tomorrow's Greensboro City Council meeting. The Guilford County Board of Education wants to hire more Greensboro police as school resource officers for the current school year. The wor this would end up being for middle and high schools in the district. The price tag more than a million dollars. The Greensboro City Council will vote on that matter tomorrow. New tonight, we are hearing from the people who knew the Reverend Carlton Eversley. Yeah, the longtime civil rights activist died at the age of 62. Dr. Eversley was a pastor at Delabrook Presbyterian Church in Winston-Salem for 35 years. He also taught at Wake Forest and at Winston-Salem State. In addition to that, Dr. Eversley was also very active in the Ministers Conference of Winston-Salem and vicinity and the Winston-Salem chapter of the NAACP. In fact, tonight, the Greensboro chapter of the organization held a moment of silence for Dr. Dr. Eversley during a meeting on election security at the New Light Missionary Baptist Church. That's where we caught up with Reverend Cartis Brown Jr. who says none of Dr. Eversley's time on earth was ever wasted. When I think of him today, I think of the fact that he certainly labored to, to receive a crown. And I believe with all my heart that Doc is rejoicing from the labor that he expended upon this earth. We do know that Russell Funeral Home is handling Dr. Eversley's arrangements, but so far those details about exactly when and where have not been revealed. Tonight, State Trooper J.J. Barnes remains in the hospital with serious injuries after investigators say that he was hit by a drunk driver in North Wilkesboro. Kirsten Gutierrez has a closer look at exactly what happened and how fellow troopers are responding. While many state troopers are shocked, they're just grateful that Trooper Jonathan Barnes is going to be okay. Any time one of our members are involved in an incident like this, it causes a great concern for our Highway Patrol family. And uh, we, because he's one of us, he's like a, a brother to us. Investigators say Barnes was hit just after 10 Sunday night. 
Master Trooper Jeffrey Swagger says Barnes was driving southbound on Highway 115 near Damascus Church Road in Wilkes County when Luis Castillo, driving north, crossed the center line and crashed head on into the trooper's cruiser. Both Castillo and Barnes were transported to the hospital. Barnes has a broken ankle, knee, and shoulder. Swagger says he has a very long road ahead. He's been a trooper for about five years, and uh, he's a great trooper, um, very committed to this profession, does a great job out here every day, and our thoughts and prayers continue to go out with, to him and his family during his recovery. Castillo is in serious condition, but is expected to survive. He's been charged with driving while impaired. Investigators say he was driving with a suspended license from a previous DWI charge at the time of the crash. Swagger says depending on Castillo's blood test results, more charges could follow. In North Wilkesboro, Kirsten Gutierrez, WXI 12 News. Burlington police are investigating the deaths of three people at Caring Hearts Assisted Living Home as a possible double murder suicide. Officers found 47 year old Dana Underwood, 46 year old Anthony Fitcher, and 43 year old Tyson Bennett all shot to death around 3 30 yesterday afternoon. Family members tell us Underwood and Bennett were married but recently separated. Underwood had since started dating Fitcher. Well, police confirmed that Underwood recently contacted the department with concern over Bennett, but officers say they didn't have enough evidence to make an arrest. All members of the assisted living home have since been relocated by social services. This man is now facing assault with a deadly weapon charges after police say he shot two people multiple times. Investigators in Winston-Salem say Johari McNair started shooting through an apartment door at a complex on Nita Drive, which is not far from University Parkway. He ended up hitting two people inside several times before police say he ran off. Both of those gunshot victims are expected to be okay and officers caught up with McNair just a short time later. Ashboro police have made arrests after a deadly shooting in that city. Marquise Baldwin is facing one count of first degree murder. He's accused of killing 25 year old Jermaine Marlin Jr. at an apartment complex on Lakeview Road. This happened Sunday night. Investigators arrested Baldwin and Irwin Blankenship earlier this morning during a traffic stop. Blankenship is accused of being an accessory after the fact. So far, no motive yet from detectives. We have heard from several of you about an incident at the Walmart in King it happened over the weekend. Police are now telling us that a man did in fact die after ingesting some kind of substance. Officers responded to a trespassing call on Saturday night and found that person unconscious. EMS tried to revive him, but he died on the way to the hospital. According to investigators, the SBI is helping with King police with this investigation. Democrats seeking the 2020 presidential nomination continue to make North Carolina a priority. Yes, yeah, Senator Bernie Sanders has a few events planned in our state later this week. First up is a rally at UNC Chapel Hill Bell Tower Amphitheater that's scheduled for Thursday at 530. The senator will then be in Greensboro on Friday. He's set to tour the International Civil Rights Center and Museum in the morning. That event is closed. Then he's hosting a town hall at Bennett College at 1:30 in the afternoon. You do not need a ticket to go to that town hall, but seating is first come first served. Fellow Democratic candidates Beto O'Rourke, Kamala Harris, as well as Joe Biden have already made stops in our state within the last month. And President Donald Trump has also held two campaign rallies in North Carolina this summer as well. New tonight, Republican Representative John Hardister is now facing a Democratic challenger to lead the 59th district in Guilford County. Nicole Ward Quick currently serves as the chair of the Guilford County Democrats. Quick says as the GOP majority whip, Hardister sides with policies that are against the best interests of North Carolina families. Other notable parts of her platform include school safety, pollution and affordable health care. Hardister has been a representative from Guilford County since 2012. Stick with WXI 12 as the 2020 presidential race continues. Our full commitment coverage is always online on WXI12.com as well as our Facebook page. Well, tonight the Trump administration is shifting its focus to how to respond to attacks on those Saudi oil fields rather than who did it. That's right. Evidence analyzed by the U.S. intelligence points to Iran as the culprit, but the case isn't closed. And with so much of the world's oil supply hanging in the balance right now, Andrea Mitchell explains why White House options to retaliate may be limited. 
As the world's largest oil fields smolder from a drone attack in Saudi Arabia, shutting down 6% of the world's oil supply, the extensive damage seen in satellite images. President Trump tonight leaning toward blaming Iran. Well, it's looking that way. We'll have some pretty good, uh, uh, we're having some very strong studies done, but it's certainly looking that way at this moment. And uh, we'll let you know. U.S. intelligence indicates the attacks originated from Iran. Three sources familiar with the intelligence tell NBC News. But the British say the picture is not entirely clear. And tonight, Iran is denying responsibility. Iran-backed rebels in Yemen fighting Saudi forces claim they did it. But the Saudis say initial investigations have indicated the weapons used in the attack were Iranian and not launched from Yemen. Will the U.S. retaliate against Iran? Do I want war? I don't want war with anybody. I'm somebody that would like not to have war. We have the strongest military in the world, but uh, no, I don't want war with anybody, but we're prepared more than anybody. Today, the National Security Council met with the president. There are military options. You certainly could strike Revolutionary Guard core sites. You could hit bases. You could hit various sites that the military already is aware of. Other options, a U.S. cyber attack against Iran or targeting Iranian ships. The attack likely kills any chance President Trump would hold an historic first meeting with Iran's President Rouhani at the U.N. next week. And that was Andrea Mitchell reporting. The president says he may send Secretary of State Mike Pompeo to Saudi Arabia to coordinate a response.